بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب وقال تعالى يا ايتها النفس المطمئنه ارجعي الى ربك راضيه مرضيه فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عجبا لامر المؤمن ان امره كله له خير وليس ذلك لاحد الا للمؤمن إن أصابته صبراء شكرة فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبرة فكان خيرا له صدق الله وصدق رسوله الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم expressed uh, an immense amount of amazement in the hadith that we just that was just recited. Right, and this amazement, this amazement was a sort of a praise to the to the person that he was describing, to the qualities of that 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 person possessed. And the Prophet sallallahu was describing a mu'min. And what he said about this mu'min was, he said, "Ajaban bi amil mu'min." How amazing is the condition of a believer? Inna amrahu kullahu lahu khayr. That verily all of his matters are good. Meaning the consequences and the results of all of his matters, the outcome for that mu'min, no matter what it is, is always good. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And 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 then the Prophet says, and this is not the case for anybody except for the true believer, except for the mu'min, where all of his outcomes, no matter what it is, come out in his favor. And then he says, إِنْ أَصَابَتُ سَبْرَةُ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُ ضَرَّةُ سَبْرَةُ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ that verily if a um, if he if that Muslim is given good fortune and he is given uh, happiness, then that Muslim will show gratitude and it is good for him. When I saw and if he is afflicted with hardships or trials and tribulations, then he will show sabab and that is also good for him. So really the Prophet was uh, highlighting many things, right, in that hadith, the sabab and the shukr. But one of the things that, one of the aspects that he was so amazed about within the mu'min, within the true believer, was the, was the, was the stability of that person's heart. Essentially meaning that no matter what the situation was, the heart of the mu'min stayed, it stayed intact, it stayed stable. Meaning that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that individual good fortunes and when he gave him um, happiness, that heart did not become stuck up, it did not become arrogant. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted that, that individual with trials and tribulations and hardships, that heart did not tremble in the face of those adversities. Right? And then the Prophet sallallahu uh, continued and he said, وَلَيْ سَذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And that is not the case for any individual except the mu'min. Meaning the only person that can say that, that can stand up and claim, that no matter what happens to me, it always turns out in my favor, is the movement. So the question really comes, what, what is so exceptional about the, about, the, about the movement that puts him exclusively in this category? What is so amazing about this individual? And ultimately it stems down to the stability of that individual's heart. The, uh, basically that, that same idea that, that no matter what happens, his heart is firm. And the question arises that what can a normal Muslim do or how can a normal Muslim achieve that level of itminan al-qalb, of, of tranquility within one's heart? And really to, to try to understand this concept, the first thing is that we have to understand what the qalb is, what the heart actually is. It would be too pragmatic of an approach to, to view the heart as just simply an organ that you know, does its own you know, physiologic uh, responsibilities. Right, but rather we have to view the heart from the lens of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Right, the Qur'an and the Sunnah give an immense amount of evidence that show that there is a spiritual component to the heart. 
right? That the, whether that spiritual component, component be physical or whether, whether it be metaphysical, there is a spiritual aspect within the heart where, and that, and that spiritual aspect is related to the belief, the iman within inside the heart, also within the, to the um, to the state or the stability of that heart. And once we start to view uh, the heart uh, uh, in, through that lens, we can actually have, uh, approach society and we can view society a, a certain way as well. Meaning that we can assess the health of a certain society based on the stability of their hearts, right? Or the tranquility or the serenity within their hearts, right? For example, if we take our own country of America uh, as an example, you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this country with many, many blessings. Allah has given this, the people in this country a, a lot of wealth. Allah has given the people in this country very good health and He's given them very good security. Right? Basically, any, most of the blessings that you can think of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this country, uh, has blessed the people of this country with. Yet, you'll find that maybe a quarter of Americans will have to you know, take Prozac in the morning in order to get make it through the day, or they'll have to take sleeping pills at night in order to sleep through the night. You know, there is a there there is a there is a there is an epidemic of uh, anxiety that has overtaken this country. Most most of the young girls growing up now all have anxiety. One of one of my professors actually says there has to be something in the milk, right, that people are drinking because everybody's getting anxiety, and it's unprecedented, and they don't actually know what's going on, right. And then we look at the the events that occur within this within the within the society, and we find. You know, bewildering events, acts of horror. You know, the person killing doesn't know why he's being killed, and the person being killed doesn't know why they're killing, right? And then you take you you compare you compare this society to another society, say uh, a village in Africa or a village in Pakistan, and those people have almost nothing, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala hasn't given them that same sort of wealth and hasn't given them that same sense of security or that same health that He's given many of the people in this country. Yet those people are able to walk throughout their day with a smile on their face and they're able to go to sleep at night uh, and sleep through the whole night. You know, those people, and many of those people are content with what they have, right? So the difference between the two communities is the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within their lives, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inside the Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُوا قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُوا قُلُوبُهُمْ that the ones that believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts receive tranquility with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen up, behold, verily the, uh, the, with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes the tranquility or itminan or qalb, right? The serenity within the heart, right? <clears throat> Typically, Muslims have uh, always understood this, right? That a person should only go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to receive that contentment. And this is for the reason that they understood who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself inside the Quran. Allah says, Allah nur samawati wal al. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, is the light or the illuminating factor within the heavens and the earth. Right? And they understood that when they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, th then this nur will enter into their hearts. And it will illuminate their hearts in such a way that they will be able to see everything clearly, right? And the, fa and the unfortunate fact of the matter is that Muslims today, many many Muslims today, have forgotten about this aspect that the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala brings about this tranquility. Rather, you know, you'll find that most of us now do dhikr of everything except Allah. You know, all we'll think about is our uh, is our businesses or our jobs or our bank accounts. And you'll find that many of the, um, most of the people growing up now, either they're always listening to music, they're listening to music wherever they go, it's in their cars, it's, on their, it's in their earphones. Uh, if they're not listening to music, they're singing the lyrics to the songs. If they're not singing the lyrics to the song, the song, the lyrics are playing inside their head. Right, the song is stuck inside their head. Right, and this is, all of this is a dhikr of something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person does, Zikr of something Allah, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Allah, Allah says, Allah nuru samawati wal al. That Allah is the illuminating factor. And when we do zikr of Allah, then that illumination, that light comes into one person's heart. But if we do zikr of things other than Allah, then, then what's going to happen is that a darkness will overcome our hearts. 
and that anxieties and fears and anguishes will become prominent. Um, and the Prophet says in another hadith that everything except the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cursed. So when we do dhikr of things, of things overwhelming, overwhelmingly, of things other than Allah, then the only consequence will be this sort of these anxieties and fears that overcome us. Right? The, the heart in itself, an important thing to understand about the heart is that it's something that whose desires are infinite. The heart will always want to continue to keep having more and more. So we, so many times we try to satisfy our needs of the heart through things of this dunya, right? So we, we chase after certain things in this dunya to satisfy the needs of our heart, right? Imam Razi rahimahullah, he says regarding this verse, Allah bi dhikrillahi he says regarding this verse that the heart is something again that has that has infinite desires, and people will look for it in places uh, in, in the dunya, which is a finite place. Meaning that the heart wants an infinite amount of resources, and the dunya is in, by its very own nature is limited in the amount of resources it can provide. Right. So no matter what happens, the heart will always be unsatisfied. This essentially means that if you give a person a mountain of gold, they're always going to want another mountain of gold, right? Rather, if that person, if that person takes his heart and he seeks for its fuel and he seeks for its resources at an infinite source, only then can that heart be satisfied. And that infinite source, the only infinite source in this universe is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So if a, so if a per, so if somebody starts seeking to satisfy their heart and they start seeking the contentment of their heart through um, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only then can they achieve it. Right? A very good a very good um, example and we'll, we'll end uh, with this example is, um, is a, it's of a child. Right? Imagine a child that you put inside his bedroom for the first time. Your own bedroom. You turn off the lights and you close the doors and you leave. Right? Then immediately after doing that, that child begins to, uh, begins to cry and begins to scream and call out for, it, for their parents. When the parent comes back, he opens the door, he turns on the light, and immediately that child stops crying. Right? Such is the case with the heart that has become uh, engulfed in darkness. Right? That a person's heart is, is, is entirely in darkness, so much so that they continue to keep sinning, and the hearts become sealed and no light enters. So that person is in nothing, is in utter darkness. Then when that person begins to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a door opens, a window cracks, and light begins to pour in. Up until the point where all, once, once all of that light comes in, now that individual is able to see clearly. Just how, the, just how the child was no longer in panic and no longer in anxiety and, and anguish, so too will the, will the mu'min when, that, when the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his heart. And only at that state will that person reach the level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned uh, inside the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji ayy ila rabbiki radiyatan maradiyya fadukhuli fi ibadi wadukhuli jannah That, oh, oh, the soul who has reached this level of itminan al qabr who has reached this nafsul mutma'inna Right, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan maradiyya Return back to your Lord Radiyatan maradiyya That soul is pleased with, uh, with That person is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that person Fadukhuli fi ibadi And enter into his worship Wadukhuli jannati And enter into jannah So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to do To remember Allah uh, To remember him in all situations In all circumstances To illuminate our, heart, our hearts such that everything becomes clear. Only then will we be like that movement that the Prophet Sallallahu described in the, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu was amazed at. Right? Where, he, where he said, Ajaban li amdil mu'min, how amazing is the situation of the mu'min. In the amrahu kullahu lahu khayr, all of his manners are good. Walaysa dhalika li ahadin illa lil mu'min. Nobody is like him. Right? Only then, once our hearts are illuminated, will, be, will we be able to see the realities of all, this, of all the circumstances that we're put in. And that, and then only then can we receive tranquility within our hearts. Um, Subhanallah. Uh, so may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us hidayah. Amin. Amin. Wa akhidah. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil